you're listening to the Well Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Gemma Lee, women's menstrual cycle educator, natural fertility coach, and daytime mermaid. This is a place where we discuss all things periods, poo, ovulation, fertility, and sex. Join me weekly as we rediscover our menstrual cycles, unlock its superpowers, and guide you back into your cyclical nature. Mel, welcome to the Well Women podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I am pumped to chat with you. You are so worth it and so welcome. I'm also really pumped and it's interesting because I know one of your um, team members emailed me and was like, hey, do you want to try to try our seed cycle blend? And I was like, oh, um, what? Yes, I would love to try your seeds and your blend of seeds. And um, that's when the image of, you know, us host like, holding an episode talking about seed cycling for your menstrual cycle came in and I was like, oh, I have to ask Mel. So thank you so much for being here. Oh, the fact that you even said like your team member, <laughs> that's exciting because that's all very new <laughs> to us to have a team member. Um, and yeah, so we have Serena on board now. She's a nutritionist and EFT practitioner and helping us out uh, with things like this, like reaching out to amazing people like you. And yeah, it's been, it's been great. I <laughs> think the last year and a half has just been crazy um, and I haven't been able to do everything that I would like to do so yeah it's really exciting here's to more time for you right yes <laughs> um thank you to all the helpers out there including my amazing assistant Mina because it makes all things possible people are like how do you do all the things I'm like it's called Mina my assistant <laughs> <laughs> um who keeps me on tap so Mal, before we jump into it, tell us what day of your menstrual cycle you're on today and how are you checking in in this moment? How are you feeling? I'm feeling really good. I am about to ovulate. Uh, so about day 13, 14, my cycle's around 28, 29 days. Uh, and yeah, feeling good. It's a good time to do a podcast. I feel much more articulate <laughs> in this phase. Um, get me in, in the premenstrual uh, luteal phase and it, you know, it's a little bit harder. <laughs> so good timing. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm on cycle day 10 today, so I'm not far behind you as I chase you down the gauntlet of fertility of the fertile phase. Um, and I agree. Um, mind you, I think, you know, every time of your cycle is a great time to report a, record a podcast because you get such a different version of the person. Which and that's why I love to ask that question so that the listeners, for you listening, you can hear and go, oh yeah, I can totally see why she's on day 13. She's got this total vibe going. Um, so thanks for bringing your summer glory to us. Yeah. <laughs> now, before we talk about seed cycling, and there's a lot, it's been a bit of a buzz, seed cycling in the last two years. And, you know, there are a few little brands popping up like your own around seed cycling and helping prepare the seeds for people to make them super easy and convenient to use. But before we get there, like, who are you? <laughs> and how did you get this passion for blending seeds because it sounds really bizarre if anyone's tuning in and they got no idea what seed cycling is it's like yeah you just take these seeds and you blend them together until they're milled and then you add it to things yes. so tell us like what's your background and how did you start the seed cycle yeah, so my background is actually in functional nutrition and I'm also an EFT um, tapping practitioner and I, if you had told me a couple of years ago that this would be what I was doing, I would not believe you because my passion was really working with women to help them heal their relationship with food and their bodies. Um, that's why I got into nutrition and EFT because I struggled. Um, I was obsessed with losing weight most of my uh, teens and 20s and I tried every single diet and I was always um, really um, yeah not I did not have a good relationship with food in my body and I started studying nutrition to because none of the diets were working and I was like I, and if I study it maybe I'll know what I can eat to lose weight like that's really the motivation and then I started studying and I really it just opened up my mind um, and I really started to see food as medicine and then I came across 
functional nutrition. And that was just even more mind blowing because I remember one of the first subjects was like culture and traditions and its role in our food choices. And I was like, yes, because I had tried to live my life in this like calorie counting, food as fuel, and it wasn't working because I come from a Croatian background. Food is how we celebrate. Food is how we pass on traditions. It's not just about food for fuel. So, you know, actually having this acknowledged in a nutrition um, course, it was just like, yes. (laughs) And then it was EFT tapping that really helped put the final puzzle pieces I guess together Um, and you know what I realized was there was some beliefs underneath um, those tendencies around obsessing with food and trying to lose weight so using EFT which stands for emotional freedom techniques um, to um, to to help with that was amazing and so this is what I was doing I was uh, had done all that personal work I had done the study and I was working with women one-on-one and we were doing the EFT side of things we were doing the functional nutrition and there was just this gap and I didn't know what it was but it was like that my clients would be doing really well but then it would get to that time of the month and everything would just fall apart, cravings, PMS. uh, And so at that point I was like, there's, it's got to be a hormonal imbalance going on. What can, what foods can we use? You know, I'm such a believer in food as medicine. What there's got to be some foods that we can use to help with their hormones. And yeah, then I came across seed cycling and it was just ticking off all the boxes it was using food as medicine it was an intuitive practice it was there were there's science to back the function of the seeds Uh, it was adding something in you know I think that with nutrition it's always like oh you can't have dairy you can't have gluten you can't have this you you know and it was like we're not there's so much power in adding things in so it was just like yes 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 loving it uh, and it was just then something over a couple of years that I was adding in with my clients uh, and it was, it, the results were just incredible. Uh, and, but then it got to a point where there were a couple of clients where I knew seed cycling would help, but they're like, oh, Mel, I just, I keep forgetting how to do it. I keep forgetting to buy the seeds and then you have to grind them up. It's all too hard. And so that's when I was like, what if I just like package them up for you and I'll deliver them to you? (laughs) So then all you have to do is add them, you know, make it really simple. Uh, So that's really where the idea started. And it was actually my husband. I was telling him about it and he was like, this is a really good idea. He had gotten on Google and seen that it was pretty, you know, it's trending. There was, you know, thousands of people searching seat cycling. And um, at the time, no one else in Australia Um, doing anything like we were um, like my idea and yeah so he was like let's start a new business it doesn't sit under your business now let's go big with this Um, and once he said that it was like boom like within a couple months we had like the packaging we had the website we had the seeds we started off um, in our kitchen (laughs) and so when you talk about like grinding seeds like that's exactly what we've been doing like that's the vision I got I wish we had Mel on her Sunday afternoon with her food processor (laughs) mealing out, you know, all this. Yeah. But it's not even that. It's like the gloves and the hat and then the the full suit. (laughs) Oh my goodness. But yeah, that's, that's the story. And we were just, we, we launched um, really quickly and it was just the messages that we got and the take up within that first month was, was just incredible. We were blown away. We couldn't keep up. Um, We had naturopaths contacting going, you've just streamlined the whole process for me and my clients. Other people contacting going, oh, my goodness, I did this 10 years ago and it helped me fall pregnant. I wish I had your seeds then. Just like it was, I just think about it now. It's such a like an exciting rush. Um, And like my phone would ping every time we got an order. (laughs) I had to turn that off because it was just too much dopamine, you know, (laughs) too much for my body to handle because it was so much excitement. Mm. Um, but yeah, and ever since then, it's just been growing. We just, at the start of the year, we moved to a manufacturer in Queensland and they've just been incredible and yeah, getting bigger and bigger, which is really exciting, helping more people. I love that. We'll have to talk outside of this recording because I might know that manufacturer. No, oh, I used to work in manufacturing in <laughs> Queensland for food. Um, I think it's such a beautiful journey and I did get this visual Cause I always think of my boss, um, you know, back when I worked in food science, you know, manufacturing in the manufacturing warehouse and 
you know, when he started, he used to make bars and he did it in his kitchen, you know, and John would wear like the, <laughs> like the hat and all the things. And he'd be there every you know weekend, like rolling out these bars for his triathlon buddies. <laughs> and now it's like this big international business that, you know, doesn't just make products for himself, but makes products for others. And um, yeah, I worked for him for seven years. And so that's the vision. I got this visual of you <laughs> in your kitchen, grinding down these seeds with the mortal and pesto. Um, but I love that. What a, like, what a power, you know, powerful time for you. And you said about a year and a half ago, so I'm gathering this kind of happened around the COVID time. Yeah, it did actually. Yeah. So I guess, was this a time that, you know, people were really, I know a lot of internet sales just really boomed because people are like, I don't want to go out to the shops. I don't, can't go out to the shops. And so I need everything delivered to me. And, you know, trying to find good quality pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, flax seeds, and sunflower seeds, doing all of that. And then having to also mill, like mill them yourself or grind them, you know, it can be a lot of work. Yeah. So do you think at all that the time of COVID was an inspiration for you because it was something new and exciting and you could just dedicate all your time to it? Yeah, I think so. And I think what I really had in mind and what I've noticed with a lot of our customers is uh, we were able to bring something that probably was a little bit in the woo-woo world, you know, because when we're talking about seed cycling and then often then we'll have to talk about moon cycling. And um, and what I wanted to do was really make it look appealing um, to someone who might not feel like they are you know woo woo um and I'm all for woo woo but you know that that was my idea and I think that's what our packaging does you know it look um it, like it's something that you want to it looks so pretty you want to have it on your bench you want to know what's in it and so that was my idea and you know for a lot of our customers um when I'm talking to them it's like sea cycling is their first kind of experience of using food as medicine and a more natural way of supporting their bodies um often you know people are coming off the pill um or other medications and um and so you know <laughs> I'll have people message and be like I love it what else like tell me more you know I want to know more about this world and I was kind of the same you know then like I came across seed cycling started using it and then I was like what else like now you know then I started learning about cycle sinking and my my menstrual cycle and the phases and I learned that a menstrual cycle is not just when you're bleeding like why did no one tell me that <laughs> And the whole time you were studying oh exactly it's a while mm, you know, yeah. I've been um you know been reading all these amazing books and you know even just the way I work now it's you know everything is really in line with my menstrual cycle life is so much easier and um so yeah back to your question I think it is a combination like yeah I, I it's such a blur but I think it is a combination of you know, COVID, but also, uh, you know, we were able to reach people that may not have, um, yeah, you, you know, started seed cycling. Mm, I love that. I love that. Um, yeah, it's so, it's so beautiful hearing stories. I love hearing stories and how people arrive to where they are in this current place in this current time. And I can imagine it being a very big blur for you, especially with how quickly things kind of hit the ground running for you. And it just goes to show you that, you know, when you discover what it is that people want, you know, it really can hit the ground running. Yeah. I um, was just, I had this, like, I'm like, if this is such a good idea, if I don't do it and I don't do it now, someone else is going to do it, <laughs> which is fine. But like, it was just such a driver of like, yeah, I can't even, I don't, it's hard to explain that feeling that took over that really got us, um, you know, yeah. Selling so, so quickly. I, um, it's interesting because I actually remember so I discovered my cycle when I came off the hormonal contraception in 2014, so nine years ago, and I've been a coach since 2013. And so I then tailored, like I kind of started coaching on the cycle around 2015-ish, 2016, depending on wherever the overlap is. And I remember seed cycling coming out in like, or hearing about it in like 2018. So I studied ancestral health, which is very different to functional nutrition, but some very similar overlaps about how we used to use the land and earth, mother nature and food that comes from mother nature as tools mm. to help us heal. And they used to, you know, like I always love to say that they treat, heal, cure and diagnose disease 
with nothing but nature. Mm -hmm. And I love that because, you know, people didn't cut people up and, you know, put, you know, do ultrasounds or internal ultrasounds to kind of see what was going on is that the body was the messenger. And when I was studying, I learned a lot about the power of seeds and not even just the seeds that you can eat, but the seeds like a mango seed, yes, you know, apricot seeds. And when I worked in manufacturing, I remember when the big apricot seed, you know, like thing happened about it being like, and like anti-cancer seed. And we've got to like start doing, yeah, it was really, you know, there's always another next thing. And something that I love about these four particular seeds is that they are so common and they're, you know, used in so many different ways already. And most people have them in their home. And so being able to utilize it is really important. So I want to go back to what you mentioned earlier. You said, um, you know, and you discovered seed cycling. Mm -hmm. So where did you hear about it for the first time? Was it online researching? Was it part of your study? Was it something a teacher said to you? Like, how did you discover seed cycling? Yeah, it was online. Like I was searching <laughs> and I came across um, Dr. Jolene Brighton's work and mm-hmm. um, she was using it at the t- time, prescribing it to her patients specifically to help them get off the pill, which I found really interesting. Um, and then not long after that, I came across um Elisa Beatty's work she has the in the flow book which is just incredible um and yeah and from there it was um whatever podcast I could find that spoke about it reminds me a lot of when I came across EFT tapping it was like there there wasn't a lot of information um, but I was like clutching to every bit of information I could find and it's interesting now like EFT clinical EFT has over 300 peer-reviewed research um, studies like there's so much evidence behind it now and now like there's there's abundance of information and I'm like oh it's going to be interesting in a couple of years to see where seed cycling is um, with with the research side of things because I remember when EFT you know there was hardly anything it was hard mm. to find a podcast on it whereas now yeah like over 300 studies how amazing there are probably thousands of podcast episodes there's probably a whole <laughs> podcast on EFT there's, apps. there's everything exactly yeah yeah, the world and the amount of information we can access these days is just ridiculously crazy. And, you know, I could go on a rant on that, on that, but I won't. But that's great. Thank you for sharing. And um, I love that you mentioned about like the science, you know, there's science to back, you know, the function of seeds. But before we get there, I'm sure there's people listening to this who are like, what the fuck is seed cycling? Can you just ask that question already? So let's start with the very basic question. What is seed cycling for everyone who's tuning in to learn about it, who have just discovered it for that first time, like you were saying that you did, or, you know, they've just had a friend mention it and they're like trying to find some research or some information about it. So what is seed cycling? Yeah, So seed cycling is a naturopathic um, nutritional technique, which involves consuming four key seeds at different phases of your menstrual cycle or the moon phases. Uh, and so some people refer it to menstrual biohacking, which I think is really cool. Um, and it, it's really a food as medicine approach. So we're using these four key seeds to help our body predominantly uh, with the production and elimination of our two key um, sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone. And I'll ex- I can explain how to how 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 to how you can do it yourself because you're right. Like most people have these seeds in their pantry, and so they could start seed cycling today if they wanted to. <laughs> um, and it is it's a simple practice. Uh, it, it does involve tuning into your own body and where you are at in your menstrual cycle, or knowing the moon phases, which I think I didn't realize before, um, and I'm just noticing more and more now that this is one of the superpowers of seed cycling. Yes, like the seeds, the nutrients, um, all that, the estrogen and progesterone support, but that body wisdom and body literacy of understanding you have to seed cycle, you need to know where you're at in your cycle, which um, many of us don't or weren't told, um, you know, the importance of um, is, is so powerful. It really is. And it's like, I always think, you know, your period is your superpower, Mm -hmm. but to menstruate, we need to ovulate. So really ultimately the, like the fertile phase and your ovulation is the mother of the superpower. Um, And we live in a very fortunate era where more and more people are talking about it. And that's why I started this podcast back in 2019 so that we can start having conversations 
all over the place about the stuff that people feel shamed or tabooed or, you know, um, afraid of speaking up about. So I love that. Now talk us through the seeds. Yes. So we know what seed cycling is now, but you mentioned that there's seeds for each phase. Now, most people who listen to this podcast know that there's four phases to the menstrual cycle, but with seed cycling, we focus on the two kind of like the first half and the second half. So what are the seeds for the two phases and how do you describe them? Yes. So that's right. For, for the purposes of seed cycling, we break it into two phases um, and we'll say like the follicular phase for your first phase and then the luteal phase for your second phase. So for phase one of seed cycling, you're having pumpkin seed and flax seed and you're, the therapeutic dose is a tablespoon of each ground up um, and certified organic seeds are really important as well Um, and basically you're having that each day Um, and so you can have the seeds um, on top of your yogurt or in a smoothie on top of a salad Um, you can make little bliss balls out of it Uh, and what that those seeds particularly the flax seed is very well researched in its support of estrogen. Um, And so um, flax seeds contain lignans, um, which are a really powerful source of phytoestrogens. Um, And what those, so analogy that I've been trying to use, and hopefully this resonates, but um, so we have estrogen receptor cells all over our bodies uh, and the nutrients. So the the flax seeds are like the plug that plugs into the receptor and tells that, receptor what to do Um, and so depending on what your body needs so it'll either say yes you need more estrogen or no block um, block the production of estrogen Um, and so what we also know is that um, when our estrogen is in balance uh, we're less likely to have those PMS symptoms um, and also sets us up for the second phase and progesterone Um, So that's phase one. Um, And really the other, I guess, stars in phase one, are the pumpkin seeds are a really good source of magnesium um, and iron. um, And there's a heap of other nutrients as well. And then when we move into the second phase, um, and so that's from ovulation back to day one um, of your period. Uh, And often, um, so with the way we we have our products is we've broken it down into 14 days and 14 days. And that's great if you're cycling with the moon, which I'll explain in a second. Um, but we're also very aware that not everyone is um, has a 28-day cycle. So we have a little bit of extra seeds in there if your cycle's a bit longer. Um, and you can then continue seed cycling until you ovulate. And then you're switching to phase two. And phase two is sesame and sunflower. So same thing. It's a tablespoon of each ground up certified organic, you know, pop it onto your onto your breakfast. Um, you can have it with your lunch, have it as a snack, um, however you prefer. And um, what we know about sunflower seeds in particular is they're a really good source of vitamin E. Uh, And it's interesting because everything I read and even when I was working with clients, it was like, you got to give it three to six months, you know, do it consistently, um, you know, give your body a chance, give, you know, your cycles a chance to to regulate. And then that's when you'll see all those amazing benefits that that we want with seed cycling. But so many of our customers tell us within the first month, they notice their skin, their skin, they're like melting. Oh, my skin's glowing. I haven't had breakouts. I just, you know, I can feel it in my skin. And, you know, I think that that does have a lot to do with that vitamin E in, in the uh, in the sunflower seeds. Um, and also the sesame seeds are a really good source of calcium. Um, and we know calcium for bones um, health, um, but also our nervous system um, and um, to help um, with the production of hormones. So, you know, um, the other thing that, I love about seed cycling is that um, it helps us, um, you know, really think about our meals, you know, like I'll have someone say to me, oh, you know, I'm making myself really um, delicious breakfast because I don't want to put my seeds on like Vegemite and toast. (laughs) So thank you. (laughs) You know, so, um, and I'm, I do think that uh, we all, where we can, where we can, like we need to get into the kitchens. We need to be preparing beautiful meals for ourselves. And, you know, seed cycling sounds like it's helping with that too, uh, which is so great. (laughs) Amazing. And your spot, I I concur. 
Mm-hmm. So many of us just opt for like convenience and we're not designed for that. Like our whole day, di- and you would know this in functional nutrition is like our whole digestive system is designed to like grow food, pick food, clean the food, prep the food, then cook the food, not just cook. And then not even like forget all of those people. Some people just eat or pick up and then eat. Yeah. And so there's nothing against that. Like, don't get me wrong. I've definitely done takeout a few times, but it's important to recognize that like that doesn't truly activate all of our digestive system. And I love that everything has such a power and I have a product idea for you. Okay. What if you did, and this comes from like my background in yeah. manufacturing, I'm always like, ding, ding, we have a winner. I've got an idea. Yeah. Um, like what if you could make phase specific butters? Mm. You did like a, like, cause I've definitely made and used pumpkin butter, um, a pumpkin seed butter, not, not actual pumpkins, the seeds, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> pumpkin seed butter. And, um, yeah, and it makes, it's such a rich source of protein. I know you said iron and magnesium, but pumpkin seeds are seeds that have the most amount of protein. And so people are like, well, you know, I'm a vegan or I'm a vegetarian and how do I get more protein? I'm like, eat more pumpkin seeds. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I love that. And also phase two, sesame seeds is what tahini is. Yes, exactly. And for people who don't know that, and I always find it interesting, if you're listening to this and you're not based out of Australia, flax seeds are also called linseeds. So if you live in North America or in you know Europe or the UK and you're like, what the hell are these flaxseed things these Aussies are talking about? Because I can't find them. <sighs> Same seed just a different name it's kind of like cilantro and coriander they're the same plant they just have a slightly different name for whatever English trans you know transition of language I don't know where that happened but yes very similar so that's my product idea for you oh I love it and now that we have a manufacturer like hey (laughs) yes and um I'm just having all these visions of because I recently made um sesame um, you mentioned it before, Vegemite, but I, you know, for those who are Aussie, I yeah. made tahini Vegemite for the first time for the retreat I recently hosted. And it was because I wanted them all to have something that was super nurturing, and nourishing. And I find Vegemite for a lot of Aussies can be a really great, you know, emotional memory of childhood. Mm-hmm. So I haven't had that since I was 14. I'm turning 37 this year. And I was like, holy shit, this is the real deal. I feel so excited. So maybe I really just made it for myself, not for anybody else. But anyway, really good source for that phase two. So who knows, we're, we're expanding your product line as we speak. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is awesome. And my question, my next question was kind of be around like, how do you use it? So you made some awesome suggestions. I love, you know, I actually make a little mini, um, I call it a, um, a cycle granola, which is not just for the you know, for the two phases, it's for all the other phases and everything is all combined into one. And I add my seeds in there. And then I always have it with yogurt and some soaked chia seeds and some amazing, depending on the season, but some fresh fruit and whatever's in season. And, oh, it's like my on the go breakfast for when I'm traveling on the road. And I do a lot of travel on the road, especially camping. So I love that breakfast. Um, but how do you do it? Like, tell me how you do it in your kitchen, Mel. Oh my goodness. Well, I am not one to have the same thing every day. So I feel like it's always different. Um, I am, we have bake mixes. Um, and so I, and I'm such a sweet tooth. So it's often, um, I'm having like a piece of brownie (laughs) as my snack or the biscuits. Um, and I'm getting that, healthy snack um, I'm getting and it's often like as I'm out the door to pick up the kids <laughs> from school um, so I'm having the healthy snack I'm getting my seeds in um, that way um, or if not it's just a scoop on like at the moment um, I'm making a lot of liver pate which I know people might think gross but it Ooh. is so delicious and my like my three-year-old and five-year-old have it on sourdough every morning and they're obsessed with it too liver um, pate and you put the seeds in well, yeah, and then so what I'll do is I have my sourdough, I'll put the liver pate on top, and then I'll sprinkle the seeds on top, and it's just it's so yummy and nourishing, and um, and I and I guess it's interesting because I do crave the liver pate more when I'm in my follicular, like menstrual follicular phase, and then I get extra iron um, and all those nutrients. Um, 
but yeah and then I'm also experimenting a lot with recipes so I'm making like seed thins and bliss balls and I'm gonna have to do the um the butter like you said I'm gonna have to try that because I think that would be delicious as well well. sister I've got a list of ideas for you rolling through my head considering this was my full-time job for seven years that I would you know produce all these great ideas for brands but um there's so it just goes to show that people like oh seeds oh yeah like whatever but the you know, the options are really endless. And I love that you have these baked mixes. I just got mine in the mail and I'm so excited to try them. Um, because I feel that more people want convenience, but they also want that natural approach and that little bit of witchiness, like you mentioned, and it's like, Oh, how do I kind of, how do I be the girl on the street who runs a business or, you know, is a stay at home mom or homeschools or, you know, whoever you are, but also can I be a witch at the same time? Like, can I do both? And so I love that we're kind of like bringing all of that in together. And I want to ask you about the moons. I have another question about the cycle, but before we get there, I think you mentioned about the moon. I know a lot about the moon, but you were saying earlier that, oh, it's really good because they link well with the moons. So let's talk about the moon phase. Yes. So often um, customers that are coming to us and, and definitely when I was working with clients one-on-one they their cycles were irregular um, or they were on the pill or they were going through perimenopause menopause postmenopause I had a couple of clients and so it was like well how do we see it cycle <laughs> uh, and what I would say to them is you can use the phases of the moon uh, and then I'll say wait 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 don't freak out <laughs> let me explain um the moon phases mimic a 28-day cycle. How crazy is that? Um, and also women throughout history have used the moon to help regulate um, and um, sync our cycles. And so what we're doing using the moon phases is we're mimicking a menstrual cycle. Um, and so what we're doing is we're having phase one from a new moon to a full moon and then phase two from a full moon back to a new moon. And often what happens is after you are cycling with the moon for a couple months, you'll find that your own menstrual cycle has regulated. And then you can switch over and start seed cycling with your own menstrual cycle. Um, And it's interesting. Um, You can even go that one step further. And uh, if your cycle is regular, and you would know heaps about this, Gemma, you can then use seed cycling and some other techniques to help sync your cycle with the moon Um, and since I've done that so I it's just coming up to a full moon so I now ovulate on a full moon um, and menstruate on a new moon it's just added this layer extra layer of like calm and stability to my menstrual cycle Uh, and I'm keen to learn more about it because I actually don't know a lot I just know for me since I have you want to come to my next retreat yes please (laughs) it's just it's crazy. Yeah. It can be a business expense for you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Professional <laughs> development. Sorry, go on. I'm there. I just need a babysitter. <laughs> Sorry, I cut you off. What were you saying? Oh, I just need a babysitter. <laughs> um, yeah, you're, you're spot on. There is so much beautiful power with the moon. And I know you said that it provides this, you know, subtle softness and calmness to your cycle when you menstruate with the new moon and then you ovulate with the full moon and we are tomorrow is our full moon. Um, as, as of the day we're recording this tomorrow is the full moon. And it's so beautiful when you do that, but I just want to add for those who don't align with the moon is that there's actually really potent powers in menstruating and ovulating at multiple, you know, different or different times of the moon cycle. It's, it's actually great. And, you know, to menstruate around the first quarter or to menstruate around the third quarter. And there's so much learning in that. And I think that as menstruators, we have this amazing ability to get the experience of all things. Whereas unfortunately for the born non-menstruators, they're very linear and they just have this plateau of just straight horizontal, you know, like a heartbeat is very up and down and just very neutral. Whereas we get this really great ability. So if you're thinking like, oh my God, I wish I did that. It's actually there's so many more benefits to the other and we can, you know, that would open up to the white moon and the red moon cycles and all the things like that. If you want to get really witchy, like all the, all the witchiness. Um, but there's multiple purposes to all of them. And, you know, our moon actually runs on a 29 and a half day cycle. So when we think about the 29 and a half day cycle, people are like, well, is today day one or is yesterday day one? And I'm not really sure. It's like, 
the most important thing is that your womb guides you when that feels like it is day one. So my last bleed, as an example to that, I began bleeding at like, I spotted at like probably six o'clock at night and I didn't actually fully bleed. Like I'm very happy to say this on this, on the show, but I woke up the next morning and I wore period undies to bed thinking, great, my flow is going to drop in whilst I'm asleep. And I didn't even hit my underwear. It was all sitting in my labia ready to be, you know, like extracted from my body, you could say. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't count Sunday as day one for me. I would count Monday as the day one. But just remember that the moon is of 29 and a half days. And that's why sometimes the full moon is at like, I think it's four o'clock or something in the afternoon, this full moon. And the other times it's like 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. And the, it's okay that we are all things and we can move and pivot and change. And a healthy cycle is anywhere from 26 to 32 days. So without hijacking the conversation, I just wanted to share those things for some people who are like, oh, fuck, I don't, I don't do that on the new moon. Is that, is that the best for me? And you know, it's great. I like when I menstruate at a different time to my best friend, because it means that we can work as a community and we are the village for each other. And I can support her while she's menstruating and she can support me whilst I'm menstruating. So there's pros and cons to all of it. Anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I think that, you know, even when it comes to seed cycling and knowing when to switch, you know, yes, it is, it's a, a specific practice where, you know, the therapeutic dose is important, the consistency is important. Like I said before, the ground up seeds are certified organic, but also, you know, you're having the seeds when your body needs those specific nutrients. Um, and so use a little bit of that intuition. Um, absolutely. I think that it's important to know when you're ovulating um, and understanding the phases and where your body's at and the tracking, but also, you know, sometimes I'll go, I'm like, oh, am I, should I take day, you know, should I take phase one today or should I switch, you know? And it's like, oh no, I feel like I should have phase one. And I th feel like I need phase one today. Um, and so just listening to that, you know, that's fine. <laughs> you know, maybe it says on the container, oh, it's day 15, you should, you know, and we did that specifically because I wanted to simplify it. But I think, you know, this conversation today is like, we've gone way past the just, um, this is how the seed cycle. It's like, really, it's about listening to your, your body and what it needs. Um, which is seed cycling. It's, it's listening to your body and giving it what it needs. Mm, I love that. Mm. Thank you for adding on. Um, I want to ask about two really beautiful rites of passage and how we can seed cycle around them. So let's first talk about menarche, our first menstruation and puberty. Is seed cycling good for that? Yes. Like, Oh, how, I've had how, how, how early do we start seed cycling at two years or I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But yeah, t t tell, tell us what, like, how can we use seed cycling to support our transition into, you know, our menstrual years and those first few years or first few cycles of menstruation. I get so excited when mums contact me because it's always the mums <laughs> who are seed cycling themselves and they say, can my, my daughter's, I think she's about to get her period. Do you think, do you think I should start her on seed cycling? And I'm like, oh, how beautiful that they are being introduced to this practice, um, you know, and explained and, and can see themselves the power of food that that young. Uh, and I'm like, yes, yes, yes. You know, um, that's so such a beautiful introduction. Um, and so, yeah, absolutely. Um, to answer your question, I think that's such a beautiful thing um, that that girls can do. Um, uh, it's it would be interesting because um, the other thing that I find with mums um, who are trying to get their teenage daughters to, um, to see cycle, they're like, they pull their hair out because they're like, they're not being consistent with it. Uh, and, you know, and they're like, I oh, even tried the bake mixes. And um, so I think maybe allowing it to just um, be a little bit looser than we would say, you know, like we're very much like have it every day, the consistency. But um, I think it might be just, you know, explaining the the benefits um, and, and offering it as a suggestion. And, you know, even if it is every now and then, I think that that's amazing for them. Mm, I love that. I love that advice and guidance. And you know, I work a lot with teens and teach in schools. And I think that the best way that parents can support that is be a good role model. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't, you know, imagine like when your partner shoves something down your throat and like, you've got to do it this way. And I like it like that. Is that you're like, hang on a second, just 
be a role model, do it from the distance. And that over time, especially if your kids are young, so let's just say you're listening to this and you've got really young kids. If you brought this in as a habit, that was just something that you did daily, just to, you know, like brushing your teeth, just to support your cycle is over time, your kids are going to be like, well, can I start that yet? Like, do I get to do that yet? Because I want to be a grown up like you. So Mm -hmm. be a role model is what I would suggest there and love that great advice. And kids won't do it all the time. You know, teenagers are like, no, I'm too cool for that today, but tomorrow I might be okay for that. Um, so good insight. Let's talk about the other rite of passage, which is menopause. And I know that, you know, the transition of menopause and, you know, the, the rapid decline of progesterone followed by the rapid decline of estrogen and then peaking of estrogen. And then, oh my God, I've got too much estrogen in my body. And because of that, I've got hot sweats and night, like night flushes and all the things, um, can seed cycling support that? And what would you recommend for those women who are premenopausal? And, you know, entering that menopausal phase who have like, maybe I haven't bled for six months. Am I here yet? Am I not here yet? Like it takes 12 months of no menstruation before you're in menopause. But for those women who are approaching that time, can this make it much more smoother? Yes. Well, when, when you think about the the seeds and the fibers in the seeds and like the nutrients that we mentioned, and particularly there are times, like you said, when estrogen levels are, you know, your body's just struggling there through the roof. So the seeds are really good at supporting that elimination. Uh, and from a nutrient perspective absolutely but then also from a cyclical perspective so yes um, you know you may not that you may not have had um, a period for a couple months or it might be you know you might be spotting or or, or whatever you know we know that um, every story is unique um, but using the moon phases and continuing that cyclical way of living by using the seeds is is really powerful and grounding um and so yeah i absolutely recommend it Uh, and uh, we've had a couple clients who uh, have started seed cycling Um, one hadn't had a um a cycle for a couple months and then she felt like the seeds actually brought her cycle back and then she had seven months of um, regular cycles again and she was just wow. the moon and like she was just so happy that she was um, able to have those extra she felt like she was getting extra periods um, and we know that that's really important that's really great like the longer we can menstruate the better um, and then after that um um, she, I think now she's had another six months or so without, um, but you know, she's just so grateful to have that, that seven months of a period again. Mm, cleansing seven months for her. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. I always, um, you know, I work a lot with menopausal women, surprisingly, even though I've not been through it myself, but, um, all the same things very much apply. And I always suggest that every bleed you want to honor the fuck out of it because it could be your last one it's like when you're pregnant with your last baby and you know you're not having any more babies you're like I just want to enjoy every moment of pregnancy and you're not ready for for it to end yet because you know this will be the last pregnancy Mm -hmm. um very much treat it like that like enjoy every moment um because yeah once you don't have it a lot of women really miss it once they've established that good rich relationship with the cycle, which is very possible and, you know, very, very well remembered. Mm. Oh my God, this is so good. Okay. I've got a couple of final last questions for you. So top tips about how to start seed cycling. So do you have like top three or five tips on what you can do to start the process? Like if I'm, if I'm someone who's never heard of seed cycling, it's day 10 for me. And I'm like, where do I start Mel? Like, what do I do first? Yeah. Help me. Start where you're at. So a lot of customers will say, oh, uh, I'm waiting until, you know, two weeks um, or, you know, I'm, I've got 10 days and then that's when um, I'll get my period. So I'll start then. And I'm like, no, don't wait 10 days. Start now. <laughs> start where you're at. So if you are in on day 10, start with phase one. Take phase one for a couple of days and then move to phase two when you're ovulating or around that um, day 15. Uh, same as if you're using the moon cycle, look it up, see where we're at and start where we're at. Um, I think that the other really um, top tip I have is the consistency side of things. Um, so, you know, yeah, if you miss a day or 
too, that's fine. Um, but, you know, you really use it as a ritual and a consistent practice. That's when you're going to get the best results out of it. I know myself too, like if I've had a month where I haven't consistently seed cycled, I feel it. You know, I feel it in those couple of days leading up to my period. I feel it, you know, that um, it's not as a, like it used to be with those um, really heavy PMS symptoms, but, you know, it's not as nice. So, you know, you, you'll too feel that, um, um, yeah, so consistency. The therapeutic dose as well is another um, important tip. Um, you know, people will say to me, oh, well, I kind of have the seeds every now and then anyway, or, you know, I there's there's some of those seeds in my granola. Um, but it's the therapeutic dose is really important um, when it comes to seed cycling. Um, what else? I think they're my top tips I, oh actually one more I'll add one more <laughs> the freshness of the seeds um, is really important as well so if you are grinding up your own seeds uh, just making sure that you're storing them somewhere dark um, in a dark container um, in the fridge as well um, will help with the freshness uh, uh, we um, include oxygen satchels um, we have a we grind the seeds in small batches uh, and um, we have a short shelf life we really want to maintain the integrity of those seeds and make sure that they've got the highest possible nutrients to support your body so if you are seed cycling yourself yeah making sure that you're storing them correctly oh I love that that's a great tip another question popped into my mind what's the difference between having the whole seed versus having the ground seed because I know that I'm like oh, but you know I love pepitas I eat pepitas are also another name for pumpkin seeds <laughs> so confusing this English language so if you know if I'm like oh I love pepitas and I love just munching on them oh, chocolate coated pepitas oh my god they're so delicious if you've never had them google where to buy them because they're so good but you know like yes I love just eating pepitas is that as good as seed cycling like why is it important to have ground seed as opposed to having the whole seed yeah, well, there's another analogy, and I hope I can explain this well. So when a bird has a seed, um, it goes straight through that. They pip it out, and then that seed turns into a flower or whatever it's meant to sprout. be. It's sprout. Um, and so if we are consuming the whole seed um, and they're not ground up, then um, they're just going straight through us. Um, whereas when you grind up the seed, our bodies are able to access the nutrients in it so it is an important part people will say to me but what if I just chew them really well <laughs> and yes pumpkin seed um you want to be chewing them really well but something like um your flax seed you're not going to be able to chew that. they're so small I'm yeah. sure you've seen your fucking sesame seeds <laughs> in your shit before <laughs> We don't want that. We want we want we want your body be being able to access the nutrients. Mm. So that's why we grind them up. That's a great analogy about the bird. And it's interesting because I've been shut on by a number of birds in my lifetime and I've never seen seeds in their shit, but I'm going to start looking. Um, really good point though. And, you know, multiple things is that, you know, our body's not really designed to digest those if we don't chew them. Like this is such a sidebar, but we only have two sets of teeth, like ideally our teeth in our mouth and then the teeth in our stomach, which isn't even teeth. It's acidity, which acts like a second set of teeth, but it's not strong enough to break down a hard seed. Like sometimes I pop seeds and nuts in my mausoleum and pesto and I crush them up for whatever reason to sprinkle on like chocolate coated dates and they still don't even crush. And I'm smacking that thing with a rock. So like, how is our body going to digest and break those down? And so that's why it's great to use ground seed. So really good answer, Mel. Thank you for sharing. Now share with us. I have one final podcast question after I ask you, how can everyone find you and learn more about the seed cycle and what it is that you do there? Yeah, so they can head to our website, which is theseedcycle.com.au. We also love to share lots on our Instagram and Facebook, and I'm trying out TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> So you can, um, yeah, you can connect with us there. Uh, I do, uh, I answer um, all the DMs personally. Um, so, and we also have a 1300 number, um, which I love to get calls on. Um, so, you know, if you've got a question, if you don't know how to start, um, don't know if seed cycling is right for you, give me a call. Um, I'll be the one answering. I might call you back if I'm with the kids <laughs> um, and we can talk about it and I can explain the whole process. I love that. Thank you. I love that you have a phone number. It is so hard to call brands these days. Like 
impossible. It's like, no, no, we only take a contact form off the website. So I love that you have a phone number. Um, but Mel, this has been absolutely amazing. Thank you for being here. I have a final question for you and we're switching out gears and I don't know whether you've heard me ask this question on, a, on an episode before yet or not, but I want you to think back to your younger menstruating self. This is Mel going through her puberty and menarch time. What are three things that you now know today that you wish you had have known when you went through menarch? Mm. I wish I knew about the phases. I wish I knew there is so oh, this is so hard. There's so much I wish I knew. I know, right? <laughs> I wish I knew that you feel differently in I wish I knew about the phases. And then I wish I knew that you feel differently and your energy is different and you speak differently. You interact with people differently depending on which phase you are in. You want to exercise differently. Uh, that's really been a game changer for me because it's no longer it's it's not that there's something wrong with me before you know if I was pre-menstrual and I couldn't get to the gym it was like oh well I'm lazy I'm you know I'm the problem and now it's like oh no it's just because I'm in this phase and I need to do this you know I need to do some taking for myself and (laughs) slow down a bit that's fine that's great um so yeah is that three um and the third one I just wish it was spoken about more. I wish there was more open conversations with friends and family. Um, I come from, like I said before, a Croatian background. So, you know, you hide your pads from your dad. Like that's, uh, and it's so crazy because like my husband's the same and it's like he's come so far in one generation. I'm like, we're, you know, he's helping me run this company <laughs> um, that's, you know, that's about this. And we're having these conversations all the time. And just one generation ago, it was like, it wasn't even spoken about. You didn't even, you know, you don't let your dad know that you've got a period. Like that's not what we did. Um, so yeah, there's a lot there. History. I love it. Thank you. Great three things. I thought you were going to say seed cycling for sure, oh. but you can add that in as a fourth yes. bonus, a bonus <laughs> thing. Um, but Mel, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for being here. Like I said earlier and sharing your wisdom and you know, being, you know, a creatrix and birthing the seed cycle out there for us all to, you know, really adapt to seed cycling for healthier cycles. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for tuning into every episode of the Well Woman Podcast. For everything we mentioned in today's episode, you can find this in the show notes over at wellsome.com forward slash podcast. If this episode excited you, please hit follow on Spotify, which means all of my episodes will pop up in your feed weekly so you never miss a weekly drop. I'd love you to leave a review on Apple Podcasts too. Love this episode? Come and follow me over on Instagram at wellsome underscore Gemily. Say hi and share what you've taken away from this episode with me. Now, is there a bestie, sister, or a friend who you know who might be fed up, frustrated, and confused with their cycles? Are they ready to join you in awakening their cyclical essence too? Well, take a screenshot of this podcast episode, share it on your socials, email it, text it, or any way you need to get it to them. So together, we can all live in flow, harmony, and balance with our cycles. Now, until next time, beautiful, get connected, listen to your body, and remember, body confidence all begins with living in tune with your menstrual cycle.